Colorado. We welcome the people. We welcome the people out there in the broadcast land. And uh, thank you that you're watching on Facebook, watching also on YouTube. It's going to be a good program. And it's going to be a, a wonderful teaching. Uh, we're going to start a new series. And uh, the series is going to be entitled uh, uh, Fear, and the source of fear, and how we can be free from fear. So... If you have any fear problems, uh, we suggest you stick with us and uh, take out your Bible and take out your uh, paper and notebooks or whatever and, uh, and take notes. Father, <clears throat> we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Father God. The Bible says all that honor goes to you. And Father God, you said if we were to honor you, you would honor us. And Father God, I just thank that the people, not only in, in the church here, but out there, the ones who are watching us, Father God, that they have hearts to receive. And Father God, I just thank you, and I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, let's all stand up and worship the Lord. <laughs>
Let's sing the song over again, but this time I want everybody to sing, okay? You're allowed to sing in here. Don't worry about my neighbors. They saw you when you come in and came in. Don't worry about them. Let's be louder. Because 
I, I hear people talking more about the virus than I hear them talking about the word. Yes. I get kind of shook up. Sometimes I just walk away from people that are talking all the time about the virus yeah. and all what it's doing, how many people have gotten killed and how many people have gotten infected and all the lies about it and everything, whatever the case may be. You know me? I like to talk about the victory. Yes. 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 You know, my Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Right. 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 You know, this building is a church, but it's not the church. No. You know yes. what the church yes. is? We are. Yes. As long as we raise our hands yes. up, and we shout the victory. Yes. Uh, I don't care about the dot and unbelief. I don't care about all this other stuff around me. Uh, all I do is I read the Word of God and He tells me I win. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise God. We, we're winners. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Yes. You may be seated. Yes. That was good music. Yes. I like that. I like that. That's that, that good music. That's good music. Thank you very much for the worship. Thank you very much. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to have everybody here in church, especially our friends Robert and Rosie Rivera. It's so yeah. good to see you and have you welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have you. Um, our Sunday school is at 9 a.m. and we're reading a, a book by Andy Womack. It's called Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith. We've learned so much out of that book. You just have to come to Sunday school so you can learn and so you can listen and hear the word. Our service is at 10 a.m. Of course, you know that you're here. Bible study is at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. We've had some great Bible studies at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. And we're here for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. You can come, and if you have to leave any sooner than that, you may do so. Our prayer is at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. We have good prayer people. We're praying for our nation. People, pray for our nation. Pray for the coming of election. Pray for our president. Pray for those in authority. The Bible says in Timothy, that we are to pray for those in authority. Anyone that's in leadership, we've got to pray for them. On down to the smallest little town like Rocky Ford, you've got to pray for your mayor, for your uh, people that are over you, the policeman, the fire chief, all those that are in authority over you. Lift them up in prayer. I was talking to somebody yesterday and I told him, pray for your boss. He's in authority over you, is that right? Pray for him. Especially if you don't get along, especially if he's kind of rough sometimes, and you kind of get irritated and angered at him, pray, or her, pray for them, pray for them, because you know what, it changes you. I heard, I don't know who it was that I was listening to, and, and they said, I decided not to pray for, for, for the person that's hurting me or that I can't get along with. I said, Lord, change me. When you say that, God changes your attitude. He changes your way of looking at things. And things just seem to, to change. So continue in prayer. Uh, that is 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Again, we're here for 35, 45 minutes to an hour. And we pray for the nations. And like I said, we pray for our schools. We pray for all the leaders in our, in our, in our nation. Communion Mission Sunday is, a, is the first Sunday of each month. And guess what? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot today, so we'll do it next Sunday. Uh, the ladies, they meet at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Lift them up in prayer because they are, they are believing God for what they have in their heart. God has told them, impressed on them, to help people in Mexico that cannot get their prescriptions and they, they need help in that area. So that's what they take up money for. So that's what they're sending to. So lift them up in prayer. Uh, our fellowship dinner is the third Sunday of every month, and it will be this coming, uh, 18th. the 18th of this month. And we're going to uh, have a sign-up sheet. We're going to have a sign-up sheet, but we're going to do something different. We're going to make all the, the foods that Pastor likes, because it's Pastor Appreciation Month. Oh, it's Pastor Appreciation Month. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't know that. Linda Easter, you're number one. What? Banana. I love that banana pudding. Okay. <laughs> we already have that on the list. <laughs> and Richard's keeping track of all the hours and the time and the minutes. 26 days. 13 hours. 13 hours. 
27 minutes. 27 minutes left, and he counts down because Pastor gets a little carried away. <laughs> but this month, well, that's what we're going to do to celebrate our pastor. We're going to make the foods that he likes. Yeah, chicken enchiladas, and if you want to bless us, bless you. You're the pastor. Yeah, but I can't do without you. Oh. Let, oh. Let, let, me, let me put it this way: when it comes to uh, honoring us as pastors, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of advice: don't buy us any more plaques. <laughs> I have enough plaques at home to cover a whole wall. I have, I have so many religious ties, pins, pins cups. cups, you name it. Uh, I just, I just want to be open with you and just, just leave God to you. If you want to help us, help us out financially or give us a gift card. Uh, somebody bought me a shirt. It was a, it was, the size was small. I couldn't even put it on. I told you, I got it. I got it. <laughs> and, and so, uh, just get us, you know, cash, monetary, you know, bless us like that, or a gift card, or something like this. You know, you know where we like to go. And uh, I, I'm very thankful for that. Okay, but plaques, ties, uh, you know, pants, Bibles. <laughs> but but anyhow, I just I just want to direct you. Okay. Thank you. Praise God. Anyway, that's what we're going to do for our fellowship dinner this month. So keep that in mind. Oh, let me mix the food. I know. <laughs> but, yeah. but. Bless me. <laughs> Bless me. What? How can you do? What are we, chump liver? They were cooks. What do you want? Yeah, you need to make a list. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will. I'll get it this week and I'll post it. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say thank you to all of you people because you you are awesome. We, I always tell Pastor we have the best people. We have we have the best congregation that anyone could ever want. I don't care if we're fifty or forty or thirty or whatever amount of people are here. I know a lot of people have thousands and thousands of people, but we have the very best. God's given us who he wants here. So thank you for being such good. And you know, I know Pastor and I talk about this all the time. When he's up here ministering or when I'm up here ministering, you draw it out of us. You draw it out. Yeah, you draw it out. And you just, the anointing comes down so heavy. A lot of times when we're up here singing, you can feel the anointing of the Lord because God is so good and he's no respecter of persons. Thank you for being so faithful. Um, our men and women's meeting was yesterday. Thank you for all who showed up. We had a terrific, I don't know about the, the men, I know my brother Gene spoke at the men's meeting and I'm sure it was good because I've heard him before and I know he, he loves the Lord and he speaks the word of God. Then we came in and we had our meeting and it was so good. Guess what I did? <clears throat> I told the ladies, I said, the men didn't leave us anything. I was just kidding, you know. But they ate everything. Good. <laughs> just kidding, there was plenty. We had plenty of stuff to eat. I'm just kidding with y'all. But it, it is the first Saturday of every month. And again, we just endeavor to minister to you all and that we might be the men and women that God has called us to be especially in these dark days because there's so much fear, there's so much anxiety, there's so much question there's, people don't know what to do, they're in a chaos in a, in a mood of chaos and they don't know what to do but you know what, I told the ladies yesterday we are the light of the world we should be a light out there where people can come and see what's going on out there and they can see the peace in you all and they'll know, hey, something's different. What's going on? Why are you in such peace? And I'm a mess. And then you could, there's an open door for you to witness to them. So don't forget the first Saturday of the month, which will be the 
the 7th of November, I believe. We'll be here at 8, the men come in at 8, and they have their breakfast, and then we come in at 10. They have their, yeah, they, they come in, have their breakfast, and then at 8.30 they're meeting, till 9.30 we're here at 10. So join us, invite a friend. Operation Christmas Child, also again, we want to thank you for all the, the things that, all the help that you've been to us for, for this program. Uh, Miss Natalie. Yes. Uh, this Friday, the 9th at 5.30, we're going to meet here in the kitchen and we're going to work on stuff for our shoe boxes. Um, we're going to make some jump ropes and um, lip balm and uh, we're going to put together sewing kits and maybe some fishing kits too for the older boys and girls. So that's, that's what we're going to do this Friday. So if you want to come and help us, we can use all the help we can get. <laughs> yes, because it, it's a lot of work to, to do all that stuff. So if, you, if you're available and you can be here, 5.30. Richard. Richard's bringing snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Since the, the 
this whole pandemic thing, and um, that people have to make an appointment and stuff, but we're giving more diapers away, we're giving more formula away, wipes, things of that nature than we ever have before, and God has blessed us Amen. there. He really has. So, And we do not refer for abortion. Everybody knows that. Because one year I was asking for pledges, somebody that sat here in church and knew what we did down there, because I've said it before, asked me, well, if you'd stop the, the abortions or, or this, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> that's not what we do there. So uh, we, we teach parenting classes. We try to encourage the women to... Um, to do well, you know, and 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 we um, we have budgeting classes. We have all kinds of things for the ladies uh, and for the men. We have men's classes too for for uh, parents and single parenting. There's a lot of that going on these days, but um, it's it's a good ministry. So we need to support it. Before I forget, I want to thank everybody that participated last Sunday for. The Boos's uh, baby shower and housewarming. Thank you all. It was totally great. We had good food, good fellowship, and she got so much. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. I don't get into politics, okay? <laughs> but I want everybody to vote. If you're registered, vote. Uh, <laughs> A lady that's about 83, 84 years old asked me a question. She asked me what I thought about the debate. <clears throat> and I go, <clears throat> wow. That was kind of a wild debate. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something right now that I told her. Don't vote on the personality. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Vote on the platform. Yeah. Vote on the platform. Some people may agree, some people may disagree. Mm -hmm. Go to the platform. You're going to find out that some believe in abortion. One party does and the other one doesn't. Now this, this equality plan or this equality bill that they passed, you need to, you need to look at it. We've been watching the Vicky channel, and they have some experts there that really tear this bill down apart, and you look at it uh, differently when they explain what each one of those acts does. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, that a man and a woman can get married. That's what one platform says. The other platform says that two men can get married, two women can get married. So all I'm saying is, who do you want in office? Yeah. Okay, look at the platform. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to say something here that might irritate some people, but just because you've been a Republican all your life doesn't mean the Republican Party is right. And if you've been a Democrat all your life, it doesn't it make, doesn't make uh, it doesn't it doesn't say necessarily that the Democrats been right. But there's such a distinction between the two. Just looking at the platforms. And I want to have a good conscience. When I get in there to vote, I'm going to ask God. I'm going to ask the Spirit of God, who do you want me to vote? But I've done my research. I looked at the platforms, okay? <clears throat> and all we're saying is this, vote. Now, if you don't vote, if you don't vote, listen to me. If you don't vote, you don't have anything to say about what's going on. You have nothing to say. If you didn't vote, you don't like the way the Democrats are doing or what the Republicans are doing, you have no say. Okay? You have no say. I, I talked to a gentleman just recently and he was out there knocking down President Trump, this, this, that. And I, I finally stopped and, and I said, did you vote? He goes, no. I said, sir, you don't have anything to say. Amen. Amen. So you have the freedom to vote. Some people say, well, I don't have to vote. My vote won't count. Yes, it does. Amen. Do what the Word of God says to your and Do what's good. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's take our tithes and offerings for today. <clears throat> if you're writing out a check, write it out to Family Worship Center. If you're looking for something to give in your offering, um, we're going to paint this building next summer. 
Uh, we also have the Jonas Church. We also have the youth. We also have uh, uh, the ladies that uh, support uh, <coughs> Mexico as far as uh, sending money out to the people. And so uh, th th there's, a, there's a lot to get to, you know. So just mark it down, you know, on, on, the, on your tribe envelope and, and mark down what you want to give towards. Amen. Amen. The tribe comes to the church. Amen. So praise God. God's a good God, isn't he? He can only do good. He can only do good. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the tithe is 10% uh, of what you make. And like uh, I've always said for, for many years, if, if you want to give uh, your tithe, <clears throat> you can. But if you don't want to do it, well, that's up to you. But I also believe in the what? I believe in the... Uh, uh, the, the 30, the 60, and the, and the, and the 140 turn on this. Amen? Praise God. If you don't give, well, that's kind of hard for God to bless you to meet that need that you have. Amen? So, uh, uh, we teach on the tithe and everything. I believe in it. And so, uh, uh, I, I've seen, I've seen uh, since church, uh, since they closed the church there for a while, since uh, this virus started in March, I've seen the people not attend church. I've seen people stop giving their tithe. But I've seen since March, I've seen some of the people, uh, their, their finances just go like this. Their health, uh, they have health issues. I'm going to stick with God regardless of what's going on. Amen? Amen. Regardless. I'm going to give my tithe. I'm, I'm going to give my offering. I'm going to read my word of God. And I'm going to attend church. As long as those doors are open, praise God, I'm going to show up. Amen? Yes. And you need to be fed. This lie that the devil's throwing at the church about you staying home and worshiping God your own way of going fishing and going to the mountains, uh, that, that's all a lie. The Bible says don't forsake the assembly of God's people. You need to come to church. Amen? Yes. Praise God. And I like the Victory Channel. I, I like what they're teaching. And all the speakers are on the Victory Channel with Ken Copeland. And so listen to them. Listen to them. Amen? Praise God. God's good God. Amen? Amen. Okay. We'll repeat this. Repeat this after me. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. I'm healed from the crown of my head. I'm healed from the crown of my head. The soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Amen. Amen. Now say this. I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. I'm not a taker. I'm not a taker. I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. I believe what God says. I believe what the Word of God says. If I can believe and receive it and act on it then it's mine. Yes. Amen? Yes. That's just the principles of God yes. without getting into the kind of preaching. That's just the principle of God of what you do when you become a tithe. Yes. Let's lift our tithes up. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you for the tithes and offerings. Yes. And Father God, you said, Father God, to bring the tithes and offerings yes. into our storehouse. Yes. That's the church. Yes. And then that seed time and harvest, you're planting seed. Yes. You know, that seed's going to grow one of these days. Yes. And you're going to get the harvest. And I thank you for Amen. that. And in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said what? Amen. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Minister to the people. <coughs> Amen? God's a good God? All the time. All the time. Amen. I thank God for all my uh, uh, the visitors that we have today, and uh, Jean and Jackie, and, uh, they're hooking up with us from Pueblo. They drive from Pueblo every time. <coughs> we thank God for their revers. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 This gentleman here graduated from Raymond 91. And he showed me how to get the anointing flowing in your life. <laughs> he showed me, he, he told us yesterday what you have to do to get the, 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 the anointing flowing out of you. Eat a patty melt. Eat a patty melt. And <laughs> I told him to give me chapter, book, and verse, and he said he'd go look for it, but he hasn't talked to me lately. But anyhow, anyhow, they're going to the ministers' conference in uh, uh, Woodland Park with Andrew Womack. And, uh, it's going to be live stream. It's going to be live stream, so you know you you could uh, go into it, listen to it. I, I thank God that uh, Andrew Womack. He's a uh, he's going to I shouldn't say fight, but I guess uh, he's going to stand up for what he believes in. 
that the church doors ought to be open and yes. the, the government can't tell us what to do, what not to do, and, right. and that we can only have, uh, instead of 500 people coming to church, we can only have 100 or 50 people coming That's to right. church. And, uh, yes. and so what he's doing, <clears throat> he's, uh, he's, he's, he's speaking out, and he's not the only one. There's other ministers throughout our country that are speaking out. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Uh, uh, I thank God he's doing it. But I also believe too that there's, there's a lot of Christian people that are getting together and praying and believing God. Remember, the church building is not the church. We are the church. If you're a born again child of the living God, the Spirit of God, the, the, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Amen. If you're not if you're not a believer and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's hard, it's hard for you to understand what we're saying. Yes. So when you get saved, you get born again, you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and then the Spirit of God come upon you and all that stuff, all of a sudden your eyeballs become lit up. up. You, you, you go, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that. I understand it. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Now, I want you to say this. I love Pastor Frank. Oh, I love Pastor Frank. At the beginning of the service. At the beginning of the service. I love Pastor Frank. At the end of the service. Don't eat so much. Now, I'm going to be teaching on fear. Fear covers a lot of territory. Uh, fear will paralyze you. The tactic and the device that the enemy has is to bring fear upon the people. Once he can bring fear upon the people, especially here in the United States, and just freeze the people, they won't go to church, they won't tithe, they won't study, and all of a sudden they become like the world. Are you talking about me? Somebody said, yes, we are. The devil has so many devices and so many tricks. The Bible says that we're not supposed to be ignorant of it. He, he develops things that he's been doing for billions and billions of years. Now, I want to say this. Just because you, just because I'm going to use myself, okay? Just because I graduated from Raymond doesn't mean I know anything about the Word of God. No. Just because I have Brother Hagen, <clears throat> the best faith teacher there is in this world, well, of course he passed away, doesn't mean just because he taught us for two years that I know everything about the Word of God. No. But he gave us a strong foundation. If we can pass this on from what I learned at Raymond, we can pass it on to the church here, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you, mm -hmm. you'll be standing firm. You'll be steadfast. Amen. Mm -hmm. You'll be steadfast. Mm -hmm. You will not waver. I talk to my young kids. My young kids are easily deceived sometimes. Mm -hmm. This year, this, this coming January, I've been in the school system going on 15 years now. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it uh, over the years where a lot of young people, they get excited for the things of God. They come, they come back from church camp, boy, they're jumping up and down, and the Spirit of God says, and the Spirit of God says, I heard the voice of God, I heard my spirit, man. I heard the Spirit of God talk to me, and then three months later, you ask, well, what happened at the church camp? Oh, let me see, uh, uh, let me see, let me see. Let me go look at my notes. Was it real or wasn't it? You have to stick with it every day, every day, every day. Every day you got to read the Word of God. Every day you got to get in the Word of God. Because if you don't believe what the Word of God says, then you don't believe there's a God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Amen. <clears throat> and when it comes to fear, that's one of his tactics. Mm -hmm. But fear comes in so many yes. forms. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was talking to a gentleman one time. And the way that he was talking, I, 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 I felt in my spirit, this guy's a, he's, he's, he's spirit filled, he's born again. His name's written in the last book of life, and look at him talking. 
Okay? That's why I have the uh, men's meeting. And that's why she has the women's meeting. We want to encourage, uh, in, in, in the men's meeting, I want to encourage the men to become who they are in Christ Jesus. Yes. You know why? Yes. Because you're worthy. Yes. Yes. You're worthy. You know why? Because of the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Not because of what you think you are. Right. You know, just because I got your brain it doesn't think it doesn't it doesn't mean that, oh, uh, uh, you know, you, ooh, wow, the spirit of God all over me. Ooh, my goodness, I get all this revelation. I'm just a man. Guess what Jesus did? All they do, I'm gonna see my father's hand. He took it away from him and put it on his father. You know where I see a lot of ministers meeting? Look what I've done. Look at the revelation I have. Look at this, look at this, look at this, and look at that. And jumping up and down and everything. And then all of a sudden I kind of look at him and say, is it all about you or you teach the people? And this church, guess what? My wife and I want to teach you people. And you get a hold of the word of God. So when the hard times come, you're going to sing a hallelujah. I don't like to listen to people. I, I, I really don't. Ask my wife. I walk away. If you start telling me about all this virus and how many people have died and, and the virus this, this, and the virus this, this, and the virus this, that, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll just... I've had people say, well, Frank's not social. <laughs> I don't want to listen to it. You know why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We win. We win. We win. They can bar this door. They can lock this door. But that doesn't mean that we all, all of a sudden, we scattered. We ought to come together some way, shape, or form. I don't care if it's the park. I don't care if it's out in the field somewhere. But we ought to come together and say what? Jesus is Lord. Amen. Of my life. Of this country. Yes. Amen? Yes. I'm not going to let fear dominate me. Fear can dominate you in your finances, mentally, physically, socially, uh, physically, uh, you name it, in so many forms. And I've been saying for years, fear will paralyze you of the unknown. But this church, I, I believe you guys are strong. Amen? You guys can talk good. Yes. And if you listen to the Victory Channel, you're going to be taught better. When you start listening to the prophets, you start listening to uh, uh, to uh, Kenneth Copeland. Praise God. Listen to him. Put the Victory Channel on. Somebody came up to me and said, uh, told my wife, we've been listening to Brother Hagen. Listen to him. Listen to these speakers. You know why? All they're going to do, you, uh, well, this guy that was listening to Brother Hagin talked to my wife and he said, Pastor Frank talked about Brother Hagin. Yeah. And I go, he's my teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Remember, you, we win. Yes. Uh, I want to get this point across to the church. We win. Victory. Mm -hmm. We're victorious. I don't care where I go, we win. Amen. Amen. We win. Amen. Praise God. God's good God, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Turn to Psalm 34. I just want to lay a foundation right here. We win. Amen. Yeah, but you don't know. I, I think I heard this. I, I heard this in my spirit right now. I heard this in my spirit. But you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've done. Maybe I've done something really bad in the past. All I can tell you is you don't know what the blood of Jesus has done for you. He's forgiven you. He's delivered you. He's healed you. Psalm 34, look at it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. If the praise of the Lord is not in your mouth, you're missing it. Amen? Here I go. I'm, 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 I'm comparing it to the virus. 
Okay, some people get the virus and boy, they get on the Google, they, they Google everything down, they, they look at all the symptoms, they look at all this, they look at all this, they look at all the prescription drugs or whatever the case may be, the vaccine they're trying to get or whatever. They know more about what's wrong with them than they know about my God. My, my God said, my, my, my Bible says in Exodus, it says, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. First Peter 2 24 says, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. By my stripes were healed. Amen. I am. I'm healed. I'm healed from the crown of my head and soles of my feet. Yes. Amen. I've been forgiven. My name's written in the last book of life. Yes. I'm a child of the living God. Amen. Would you believe where I'm walking? You see me walking right here with, you, with you, your eyes, your two windows, you're staring at me. You see me walking? Guess who's walking next to me? I have my angel. Amen. Would you believe that everybody here who's a born again child of the living God, there's an angel right next to you? My Bible says in Psalm 7, uh, <clears throat> 91, he says, my angels are so big that he can carry me in his hands. Yes. I visualize this one time. I believe my angels are so big that if he walks to the door, he has to bow down and walk yes. to the door. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, you don't know what the word of God says. When fear tries to come in, you do what? You react to it. Yes. Now, I'm jumping a, a little bit ahead of myself. Faith, uh, <clears throat> fear is perverted faith. You actually believe that whatever you're feared of is going to come upon you. Faith comes upon you. The Spirit of God comes upon you. So if you're thinking, well, if I, ha if, if I hang around with these people, I might get the virus. I'm going to tell you what. If you believe that you prophesy out of yourself, you're more than likely to get it. I'll never make it. I'll never have that good job. I'll never get that race. I'll always be poor. That's fear. That's God and unbelief, but it's, it, it's a form of fear because you think, well, it's, it's, you know, I'm never going to get that good job. I'm never going to get that right woman. I'm never going to get that right man. I'm never going to get the right car. I'm never going to get the right house. If that's all you talk about, you prophesied over yourself. Right. The Bible says this, I win. Right. The Bible says I have death and life by the words that come out of my mouth. Right. I speak it out. Guess what my wife and I do? We speak life. Now, since we lost, uh, uh, we both lost our spouses to death, so this coming November, next month, we'll be married 26 years. So we have eight kids. <laughs> she has four kids, I have four. That's eight together. Yeah. At first I would say, oh, Frankie did this, um, oh, Isaac did this, oh, Jeff did this, um, Rick did this. Michelle did this. And then all of a sudden, I got, I was studying the Word of God, and I go, Jesus, I have lost death by the words that come out of my mouth. See, all I'm doing is producing fear and doubt and unbelief over my kids, over myself, especially because I believe they'll never come to the Lord. But Isaiah, Isaiah 54, 13 says that my children will be taught of the Lord. Yes. All my children. So then all of a sudden, guess what I have to do? I have to repent and say, you know what, I want to speak good over my kids. Yes. I know what they're doing up in Denver. Yes. I know what they're doing up in Pueblo. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we don't want to know, but they let us know. Facebook. <laughs> and remember, Facebook never lies. <laughs> and then when I see all this, all of a sudden, I, 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 I get in, you know, I don't, I don't realize it, but what I'm doing, I'm walking in fear. I'm walking in fear, down on belief, saying, Nothing's good is going to happen to our eight kids. But I tell you what, we changed our, in, in the last year or so, uh, we changed our attitude. Now we speak good things over our kids. Yes. Now we're seeing results. Yes, amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Praise Are they all going to church? No. But I speak good things over the kids. Yes. Amen? Yes. Why? Right here, Psalm 34 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. And so, guess what I'm saying? Virus, you have nothing to hit me. Amen. Galatians 3 13 says, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. What does sickness have to do with me? Nothing. Amen. What does the virus, uh, the, the knowledge of the virus have to do with me? Nothing. What does fear have to do with me? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you, you know what steadfast means? Unmovable. I don't know if I told you the story or not, but I went to I was at Raymond one time. Uh, <laughs> 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 we 
we were uh, we were going to Rama. This happened in '85. We went down to uh, Buddy Harris's church, and he's speaking. And then he said, uh, "All the people that want prayer, come forward." So about 200 of us came up, and and I got in line because. I didn't know where to go, you know, after graduate from Rhema, I didn't know where to go, you know. Uh, I, I tell the church, I, I wanted to put a map of the United States back here and just have a door and just go back, you know, just turn my back and throw the door to wherever landed, I would go there. Yeah. And I, you, you know, there was a lot of decisions to make, you know. And so Buddy Harrison <clears throat> came up and he prayed over this one individual, prophesied over him. He comes up to me and he goes, stay fast. He goes, stay fast. And then he goes over to this guy who's on the right side of me and he prophesies over him. Oh my God. The anointing that's going to be in your life, the thousands of people you're going to minister to and affect and everything. That's what he told this guy. That's what he told this guy. And all he told me was, stay fast. I didn't even know what the word meant. <laughs> it's not in the Spanish dictionary. <laughs> And, and so, so, so I said, stand fast. And they fell under the power of God. This guy falls under the power of power of God. I'm just standing here going like this. Stand fast. <laughs> Is that all I get? <laughs> Don't laugh at me like that because sometimes I'm giving you one word and you go, <laughs> that's not all I get. And I, I went back and my family asked me, what did Buddy Hanson say? Stay fast. <laughs> Is that all? I go, yeah. So we had to drive from Buddy Harris' church all the way to Broken Arrow. And all the way to driving home, stay fast, stay fast. And I go, see, boys, is that all I get? <laughs> as soon as I got home, man, I put, the, I shut that car off, put it in park. I took the keys out, I ran inside the house, I ran upstairs to where my dictionary was at, and he would read the course. I opened it up to stay fast, and he says, and it says, solid like a rock, unmovable. Yes. I closed the book. <laughs> now watch this. I closed the book, Eric. I closed the book. The minister of God told me I was steadfast. I jumped up and I hollered. I said, I don't care what they told me, and I really don't care what they told you. The Lord spoke to the prophet here, told me I was steadfast. Yeah. Even though, now, now, now watch this, watch this. Even though I didn't quite understand what steadfast meant, because I was believing God every day for tuition money to come in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was waiting for the tuition money to come in. One time I got paid from my work, instead of getting a thousand dollar check, I got, uh, I, I got three hundred dollars and it all went to the rent. And I'm thinking to myself, when I watch this, fear comes in many forms. Yeah, but he told me I was steadfast. I told my wife, this is what the school paid me, so I go pay the rent. We had some twenty-five dollars for the next two weeks. But guess what? I'm just telling you the story to let you know. Fear comes in many forms. Now, could I have got into fear easily and done my belief? Yes. And I stood there and I went like this. I said, Lord, you told me steadfast. You told me I was faithful. Now, I'm going to thank you, Father God, that this rest of money is going to come in and we're going to feed our kids. Yes. That night, there was a meeting at Ringo. And, uh, I, I, I said, well, let's go. We'll just leave the kids there because they had, they, they had to do their homework. And by the time we came back, Frankie said, did you look in the fridge? I opened up the freezer and meat came off. Just, just fell off. Now, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> I said, what happened, Frankie? As soon as you left, some ran the doorbell and left three grocery bags right there. Wow. wow. Praise God. Wow. Now, watch, now watch this. Watch this because I'm setting a foundation. Fear comes in many forms. But if I stay with God and not yield to fear, what I can ask of him, according to Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, 
will come about. Amen. And guess what happened? We left. Frank, you heard the doorbell. He opens it up and there's three bags of groceries. We got home from the meeting and I go, anyone hungry? <laughs> and that's how my faith starts rolling. So don't let fear come in because of your kids, your job. I told you, niece, don't be afraid about it. Don't be afraid. Good things have happened to her. You know why? Because she, if she can hear the word of God and apply it to, her, to herself, well, if it weren't for Pastor Frank, well, I'm going to tell you this much. God uses everyone. But I'm giving you my examples of how the Lord dealt with me to encourage you and to edify and to build you up that it can work for you too. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen? Yes. 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 My, my, my Bible says my God will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. He'll always be there. Yes. I tell my young kids, <clears throat> all, all these 50 years, there's more suicide cases with my kids, high school kids at 14, 15, 16 year olds. Why? Because they gave up hope. They, they, they thought, God, God doesn't like me. God doesn't talk to me. God doesn't do anything. Yes, he does. But it's a form of fear, doubt, and unbelief that you don't talk right. Amen? Is God a good God? Verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be what? Do I ever get sad? We've been married more than 26 years. I learned something from Brother Hagen when I was going to run the Bob Train from 19, 1983 to 85 when the Ramah. My brother Hagen said this. He said, I'm not moved from what I see, hear, or feel. At first I thought, it, it, you know, he lost me. I, I, I put it like this. I, go, I lost him. How can you not be concerned with what's going around? But the more I studied the Word of God, the more I stayed with rain, I guess what happened? My faith developed, then my faith grew up. All we're trying to do, and then I pass it on to my wife, guess what my wife and I are trying to do? Take it. Amen. Amen. He's got a good God. Amen. Look at verse 4. I want you to read verse 4 before I read it. Read verse 4. Now, 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 now. Read verse 4. Read verse 4. Come on, come on. I, I'm just trying to lay a foundation. I'm, I'm trying to lay a foundation that fear comes in many forms. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? Oh, from yes. some of your fears? Oh. One third. Oh. Two thirds. Oh. Why do young kids get into drugs and alcohol? It's a form of fear because they think if I don't drink with the kids or I don't drink with the, uh, okay, I'm going to use it for an example of the cheerleaders. Well, the cheerleaders all drink and smoke and they do vape and everything. So if I don't do that with them, then I'm not in there. And guess what? I might be voted out from cheerleading. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Man, man, man. Oh, what would I do then? Ooh. I have to hang up and sell my cheerleading outfit. What, what am I going to do? What did you say? Good comment. Good for you. She said, if they're doing that, I quit. Praise God. I agree sometimes with you. And sometimes I don't agree. Because sometimes God may have you there to be a witness to the other girls. Can you see the other side of the flip? On the other side of the coin. Amen. Amen. He's got a good God. Can he help you out if you have cancer and you're on your fourth stage? Yes. Can he heal you from the crown of his over your feet? Can he heal you from depression? Yes. Can he heal you from uh, uh, what's, what's that word? Uh, when you don't feel good about yourself? Self-esteem. Self Self-esteem. Yes. Yes. Can you build it up? Yes. But if you let fear, can it knock you down? Yes. 
and put your bondage to fear, your bondage to all this stuff. Yes, you can. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God's good God, isn't he? Awesome. There's nothing new underneath this. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Thank God for the blood. So in verse 4, he says, He delivered me from all my fears. So what's left, church? If he delivered me from all my fears, what's left? Watch this. Watch this. Type this on the on the screen. If I'm delivered from all my fears, so what's left? I am afraid of nothing. I have no fear. Now, it's easier said than done. You have to develop it. I heard one time somebody say they're sick. Well, Jesus did it for you already. He did. Yes. Now get into good church and find out how he did it. Amen. 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 Repeat it. Repeat what you said. Oh, repeat myself? Uh, I'm afraid of nothing. <laughs> get this into your system. I'm not afraid. Now, I have to explain this. How many like to hang around the rattlesnake? I don't like snakes. But watch, watch me. I respect, I respect rattlesnakes because I know what they can do to me. I'm not denying there's not a virus. What I'm saying is, has nothing to do with me because I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Some Christians, bless their hearts, I've heard of it, say this. Well, I'm just going to pray that the virus, how can I put this? Just because you deny the virus doesn't mean you're walking in faith. Just because you're denying the virus doesn't mean you're walking in faith because we can say a lot of foolish things. I talked to a gentleman one time. He just got out of prison and everything. I asked him how he was doing and everything and everything. He goes, well, I just felt the devil do this. And I looked at him and I'm going, the devil's a spirit. He's not going to do anything. going to move it? You know what's going to move it? In the name of Jesus. In the blood of the Lamb. That's what's going to move him. If you believe it by faith and not yield to it, the devil has to flee. How many ways? He has to scab. He has to, he has to go. But just you saying it and not saying it by faith it's not going to work. Here's another example. I had a, a lady in our church one time. This is a few years, few years back. I was talking on finances. And I said, uh, how many here I believe we got for a million dollars? And this girl, uh, this lady, no, no one raised their hands, you know. Uh, this one lady says, I am. And, and I go, you can say a lot of things out of your mouth. But I don't think you actually believe it in your heart. Because if you're not a tither and a giver, yeah, right. you can believe, you can say you can believe God for ten million dollars. I promise you probably can get a dime. Yeah. You still love me? I'm stepping on people because people are saying, "Well, I'm healthy and I'm strong and I'm prosperous." Then when it's ten below zero, you're out there with tennis shoes, shorts, a halter top, and it's snow shovels. I believe I will not get sick. <laughs> and then two days later, you're in the hospital with pneumonia. Noble, but stupid. 
you got to know what's right. you got to know what's God and what's you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Did they still love me? Yes. 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 Go to the third chapter of Genesis, and let's find out where fear came from. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree, right? Look at verse 8. Well, let's go to verse 7. And the eyes of them both, that's Adam and Eve, were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. My question is, every time Jesus, every time the Lord walked in the garden, they heard it, guess what? Adam, Adam was there saying, Lord, how are you? And they got to talking. All of a sudden, they hear his voice, they, they, they hear his footsteps or whatever, and they hid because they were naked. You know why? They disobeyed God and they ate of the fruit. Right? Yeah. Now watch the next verse. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? It wasn't that God didn't know where he was at. If God showed up at a certain section of the, of the garden or whatever, Adam was always there. And this time, his presence wasn't there. How many times do you guys walk into your prayer closet and you pray. And then there's other times where you stay away from the prayer closet for three weeks or three months. What's happening? But you know what's happening? You're withdrawing yeah. yourself from Him. Little by little by little. And guess what Adam and Eve did? Can't you not? God knew where he was at. Oh, yeah. They knew what they did. He knew what they did. But you know what I really think? When you pull away from God, now listen to me very closely. When you pull away from God and you catch yourself, ask God to forgive you. Plead the blood <clears throat> and take those steps and get back into your prayer Amen. closet. Amen. 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 He's got a good God. Verse 10. Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was what? I was afraid. That's where, that's where fear came in. That's where fear came in. You talk about the source of fear? There it is right there. Fear was never in the garden of Eden. Of Eden. There was no evil. Now I say this to my Bible scholars or anyone that considers themselves to be very intelligent in the Word of God. Don't ever think that the devil, that you're smarter than the devil. He's smart. He knows how to deceive you. You understand me? Don't go like this. And say that's all I have to do. I'm going to tell you something right now. I speak the word of God over myself. I read the word of God to myself. I listen to good teaching. Because I get on, 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 on TV or I get on my, on, on my computer and I listen to good teaching. And then when I sense the devil coming at me and I feel him walking in the garden or walking wherever we are at, so to speak. I rebuke you in the name yes. of Jesus, Amen. and you have no hold of me. Amen. I'm not in bondage to fear. Yes. I resist it, and I cast it over to the Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. 
Praise God. Is God a good God? Yes. Amen. So in verse 10, he says, I was afraid. Now in the New Testament, the wages of sin is what? Yes. Can you separate yourself from God? Because of sin. And because of fear. You don't know, believe. Yes, you can. Be quick to repent and get back to fellowship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let your pride down. Humble yourself before the Lord. Yes. Amen. I thank God for grace. I heard a lot of teaching on grace. Now, some of it I agree, some I don't. I thank God for righteousness. I'm sanctified. My name's written in the last book of life. The Bible says I win. Yes. I stick with that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Is God a good God? Oh, yes. Amen. God's a good God. He's a good God. I've heard this before. I'd like to know how many people have heard this before. Have you heard people say that sometimes fear is good? Yeah. Have you heard? Have you heard fear is good? No, it's not. There's preachers that actually get behind the podium and say, fear is good. I live fear is good. No, it's not. You yield to a little fear, next time you're going to yield a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more, and the Bible says you'll be bondage to fear. Amen? I don't have the fear of flying. You know why people don't want to fly? Get my done. Yeah. You know why people yeah. have phobias? Yeah. Because of fear. Yeah. Why go to a family therapist or a psychologist or a doctor and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars taking these pills so that you don't feel fear anymore? How can a pill take away fear away? Yeah. <clears throat> there was a there was a, a couple that came to this church all many years ago. They sat in the back. They, they sit in the back. And after about, oh, I don't know. Uh, they came to church about two or three Sundays in a row. And uh, later on, I didn't see them anymore. And so uh, I, ran into, I ran into the husband and I said, uh, did I say anything wrong or did we do anything wrong? People not treat you right into church or what? He goes, no, my wife has to scold me. <coughs> about having more than 10 or 15 people in the room. I forget what that phobia is called. Cross? Okay. You know what she's thinking really up here? You know what the devil has really thrown at her? Saying that if there's 10 people, you can breathe okay, but if there's 11 or 12, they're going to suck all the air out. And you won't be able, you won't be able to breathe, and you're dying. That's fear. Yeah, Let me tell you something right now. I said this to my wife already. I'm not, I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. I win. Amen. Say, 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 say someone gets cancer and we pray over it. But because of the doubt and unbelief, they die. And they're Christians? They win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> they win. Yeah. They go to heaven. Yes. Yeah. But we as Christians and as a pastor, this is something I've learned. Oh my God, this is my prayer. Come on, get rid of the pride. Yeah. Get rid of I. You're not the healer. Right. I told my wife, you're not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You can't heal all the problems of the kids. You're not the Savior. I told her, you're not the Lord. I said it nice and neat, but sometimes you got to be firm. With my eight kids, I'm not the Lord. I'm not the Savior. 
I'm not the Holy Ghost. I listen to the one inside of me to show me how to pray for those individuals. And if I don't see no results, it doesn't change or take away what the Lord told me how to pray for those kids. Because I'm not moved for what I see, hear, or feel. I prayed over a lady one time. Had a massive heart attack. Up in Del Norte. I prayed for her. <clears throat> I saw the steps on the machines go down. I said, my God, I, I want to see a miracle. And as, as soon as I stepped back, the priest came in because she was Catholic. And the priest stepped right here, looked at me. He walked in, gave the sacraments of the last death, or the sacraments of God. The last rites. And as soon as he finished praying, you know that heart? Yeah. <laughs> now watch this. Now watch this. I learned something about pride. I learned something about pride. I went home. And I sat on that seat for about three hours. What did I do wrong? But I have gone to Raymond yet. But I met that little old man. I called him up. And guess what he told me as good as he, as he, he is? <laughs> You're not the healer. You're not the Holy Ghost. You're not the Lord. And you're not the Savior. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> it took all the pride off of me and the guilt, because guilt will get you into fear. Because the devil will say, oh, so you're a born-again child of the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit. Oh, you speak in tongues. Oh, my goodness. You lay hands on people, then they die. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you don't watch it, you let that fear come upon you, and you don't want to minister anymore. Why do so many pastors quit every year? There's thousands of pastors that quit every year. I like what Kenneth Copeland said just recently. He said, Pastor, don't you ever depend on your church for finances. They're not your source. He goes, the Lord is your source. But on the other side, if you're a giver and a tither, 36 is going to full return. See, time and harvest. Amen? Overflow. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I said all that to say this. Go to Romans 13. I still got a few minutes. I still have a few minutes. I still have a few minutes. Go to Romans 13. I said all this to say this. Because some of you may have a little trouble with what I'm going to say. But you're going to read it for yourself in your, in your Bible or your notepad or your uh, cell phone or whatever. Romans 13, 1. Mm -hmm. Let every soul or every person be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So whatever God Whatever God said in his word is law. Amen. You need to follow it. Now, let me, let me explain it by this way. There's two things that happened to me. Not only two things, but two examples. I was driving down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> looking like this, you're looking at me, kids. Watch out for those police officers. And I'm going, mm -hmm, driving up to Denver. And then all of a sudden, I turn around and I look in my rear view mirror. Oh, oh. And I saw this two colored light car. <laughs> <laughs> one light was red, <laughs> and one light was blue. <laughs> Flashing at me, Phew, I pulled over. Was I afraid? Yes. Why? 
Why? Because you were hurt. You were quite speedy. Because I was doing wrong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. I got my son, Frankie. Oh, bless his. I hope he's listening to me. We ate, and we had this cookie jar full of chocolate chip cookies. No, 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 no. We had the chocolate chip, uh, chocolate uh, uh, jar full of chocolate chip cookies, and 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 his, his mama was cooking. And I said, uh, and Frank was staring at it. I said, you can't have any until after dinner. And I sat down. You know, my wife was was cutting up. You know, you know, get dinner ready and all this stuff. And and, and the jar says he was tall enough. The jar rubbed against the, the lid, rubbed against the, and, and you could hear it. Yeah. So I ran into the kitchen, and there's Frankie with the chocolate chip cookie, like this. <laughs> now watch this, watch this. I said, Frankie, he says, Dad, I was getting this for you. <laughs> chocolate chip cookie crumbs going like this. Sit around, you can see where you bit into it. You have to teach teach your children how to lie. No, it's the nature of the enemy. Yes. We have to teach them correctly. Yes. Amen. 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 So all of a sudden, I see this red light, this blue light, and I get pulled over. It cost me fifty dollars. I was coming out of a mosquito. I had a four cylinder engine. <clears throat> I was shifting gears, and, and instead of slowing down, I went a little bit too fast. Police officer said, I'll be $50. I said, okay, when I get home, I'll write you a check. He says, you can't leave this place unless you give me cash, check, or money order. Uh-huh, I, I couldn't leave. Or I have to stay there for a couple days and wait till Monday for court. This happened in, in, uh, when, I was, when, I was, when I was teaching up in Mosqueros. Yes, I did. And so, I had just gotten paid, so I got my fifty dollars. I had to put an envelope, I had to sign it, date, and all that stuff. And then I had, he had to take me to the uh, mail, uh, the little mail thing, and, and I had to put it in there, and then I was able to leave. But because of my speeding, guess what? I got caught doing wrong, right? When I was at Raymond, I got a notice to go see Dean Moffitt. Now say that loud. <laughs> He knows Dean Moffat. I got, I got, I got a little slip of paper saying Dean Moffat wants to see you after class. Now watch this. When I saw the red light and the blue light, was I afraid? Yes. Did fear come upon me? Yes. Because I was doing wrong. I was speeding. Yeah. But when I was at Rama and I got a message from Dean uh, Moffat to go visit him after, after class was over, I was not afraid. Why was I not afraid? I didn't do anything wrong. You know what, you know what I thought? Money. Somebody's gonna pay my tuition. Oh, somebody's gonna give me gas money. Somebody's going to pay my rent because that's what I've been praying for. So, did you see the difference of fear? Mm -hmm. yeah. I walked in his office and he has me a check and he goes, take this to the front office. So I opened it up and it was a check for the rest of the school year's tuition. You know that little badge we had? Every month you paid your tuition, they, they marked it. They got my little card. She got a bunch. <laughs> and my tuition was paid for nine months. Wow. And guess what I did? I put my badge on. I slowly walked out of the office. <laughs> no fear. All I'm saying, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You brought me here and you paid my tuition. Is that different from the fear when you see the red lights and blue lights? Yes. How do you fear when a 
a patrolman stops at your house and you're in the living room and you're going, and he gets out, two of them get out of the car. And, and, then, and, and then they walk to the side of the, uh, of the car and then they go like this. You know how they always do this? Then they get their weapon. And, you know, they get their stick. And, and then, whoa, 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 what are you thinking? And you have three kids, all in high school. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Are you walking in faith? Or are you walking in some kind of form of fear because you let fear come upon you? Fear, you need to get a hold of it from the time you sense it trying to get on you. If I see two cops coming down my step, down my sidewalk, I'm going to say, praise God. I've got good news. I teach drivers it. Maybe they're going to give me a medal for teaching the high school kids at 15 year old kids how to drive. Do you understand that? Now, you see, my thinking is a lot more mature and a lot better than it was, say, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Don't walk in fear. Don't you dare walk in fear. Remember, fear covers a lot of area. What school do I go to? Do I do this? Do I do this? Mom said to be home at 12 o'clock. Court of chill. And the kids are hanging around you saying, well, I'll tell my mom and dad what to do and what not to do. What do a lot of kids do? Praise God. Is God a good God? Yes. Okay, verse 2. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that receive, resist, shall receive to themselves what? Yes. Or guilt or punishment. Mm -hmm. So if you're going 65 miles an hour on a 35 mile zone and you see a blue light and a red light, should you be afraid? Yes. They're only doing their job. I'm not saying every police officer is good. I'm not saying every teacher that's at the high school in Rocky Ford should be there. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is this. Whether they're a good cop or a bad cop, a good teacher or a bad teacher, I'm going to do what? I'm going to obey them because they have authority over me. And I'm going to pray for the one I don't like. When I teach drivers that, you can ask them. Uh, you can ask Eli. I have a lot of questions that I ask my kids, especially when we're driving for three hours in a row. I go, who's your favorite teacher? You know what this one kid said? I don't have one. I said, don't you like any of them? He says, no. And I looked at him, and, and I felt it in my spirit. He meant it. You know what? My, uh, my superintendent and my principal is not, not in church today, but I know they're listening to me. Do I agree with everything my superintendent does at Los Alamos High School? Nope. No. no, of course not. Do I have a better suggestion? Well, of course I do. Do you think so? Who has final authority? My opinion or her decision? She started bringing in this. I, 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 the last few years of teaching up in Los Angeles, I had the alternative school. So I had the bad kids. I had the kids with the bracelet on the ankle. I had I had kids in my classroom teaching that didn't want. I probably had kids there that maybe the folks didn't even want them. You know, I had the mean kids. I looked at the I, I looked at the down the hall from my classroom and I saw her walking in, walking with this one girl. I looked at the girl and I said, oh my God, she's the meanest one in the school. She just got kicked out of class. And they're gonna put her in my alternative school. So down the hall, my superintendent saw me and I went like this. I said, no. Guess what she said? Yes. yes. So I thought, maybe she misunderstood or misinterpreted what I said. So I go, no. Guess what happened? I took her in, 
sin due to the fact that the Bible says respect your, the people who are in authority over you. Let's go to the next verse and we'll be closing up. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. You should be afraid of the power. I like this. Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. You may not like the police officers in Rocky Ford. But I'm going to tell you something right now. They do. Thank God for their, their position and their lives at stake. Uh, in other bigger cities, they see a police officer, they'll just get an assault weapon and just fire right through the windshield and kill them. Yeah. And they didn't do anything. I've been a school teacher now for many years. There's good teachers and bad teachers. I've always told my high school kids, pray for the teachers you don't like. Maybe you need to pray like my wife says, maybe there's something wrong with me. And once you repent and ask God to fill you with His love and the respect for the people who are above you, you may have a different outlook in life. And maybe that individual person you don't like will see something in you and say, you know what? I like your smile. You work with some real kids, huh? You, need some, you work with some real kids. Are there some kids you want to hang at noon? Say yes. yes. <laughs> I need to say that. <laughs> I just want to get my point across. <laughs> Verse 5. Wherefore, I'm going to read this out of the uh, Amplified Bible. Therefore, therefore, one must be subject not only to avoid God's wrath and escape punishment, but also a matter of principle and for the sake of conscience. When I read that out of the King James and I read that out of the Amplified Bible, I didn't quite understand. So I looked it up. And it says <clears throat> that if I do good, even though I may not like them in the long run, and I do what is good, I'm going to have the praise of God because there is still authority over me. Amen? Do what's good. Do that which is good. So in other words, I, I, told, my, <clears throat> I told my superintendent this. I said, uh, does everybody in the high school in Los Angeles like you? She goes, no. But I like them. You know why? Because if she has no animosity towards anyone else, then the Spirit of God can work through her right. because she's doing what's good, yeah. even though the kids may not like her. Amen. Does everybody in the church like me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start over here. I'm going to start over here. You know what keeps me going? Even the
It doesn't bother me. You know why? Because I'm not afraid of what people think of me. Now, if five people come up and don't like what I said, then I better take heed to yes. what they're saying yes. because I may be wrong. Yes. And if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I'm not in fear for subject to those five guys. Right. I'm only subject to the Lord. To the Lord. Yes. If these two right here came up and said, you know, there's certain things we don't like about you. You preach too long, you talk too long, you know, this and stuff. I would say, well, thanks for letting me know. Bye. <laughs> you understand me? I'm not going to sit with them for a half an hour discussing it. See? But if I do something that you don't like, I mean, just tell me. You know, Pastor, I didn't. I, I disagree with what you said. I said, well, what did I say? And a lot of times I go, that's what you thought. That's what you thought I said, but I didn't say it. At the men's meeting, do you remember? Uh, the comment that was made, I think it was at the men's meeting, somebody made a comment and then other people said, well, that's why I don't want to go to church. Okay, this, this one minister, I heard it just yesterday, this one minister said that you could stay home and read your Bible, listen to the ministries on TV and go to church. So they took it around and they said, well, see, I don't have to go to church. I can just stay home and watch Kenneth Copeland. But if you're hooked up to that church, you ought to be a supporter of that church. Do you understand that? Sometimes what well, ministers will say something, but the interpretation of what they hear could be totally wrong and try to put fear on me or guilt or, or, or condemnation on me, but I won't receive it. Yeah. You know why? I'm free from that. Yeah. But if I if but if I'm doing wrong, I'll listen. But most of the times my wife says, You're rude, you just walked away. Well I ain't got time to sit there and listen to you cut me down for the next half hour and I won't right. do it. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm gonna tell you he that is without sin cast the first stone. Amen. Do you understand that? That's right. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. He's got a good guy. Amen. No matter what mistakes we've ever made, the blood covers it. Now watch this. It doesn't matter what kind of mistakes we've made. We are worthy to receive the best of what God has for you. I prayed for a lady one time. I was up in Delaware. I prayed for this lady. And she, this lady came up to, came up and wanted prayer. She goes, Pastor Frank, I want you to pray for me. And so uh, she came up. She was standing right there in front of me. And I said, uh, what do you want me to pray about? And this lady was about 28. 30 years old. She said, when I was 14 or 15 years old, I had an abortion. I want you to pray that the guilt in me would leave. And I said, uh, I can't command that guilt to leave. Now listen to me very closely. Listen to what I say. That Jesus Christ already forgave you your sin and your mistakes. What you need to do is ask the Lord to forgive you. You need to ask Him. Clear yourself. Get your conscience ready. Clear it up. And the devil's using it against you, putting fear of death and unbelief for these last 18 some odd years. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of people say, like, like, I'll give you another example. Somebody came up to Brother Hagen and said, Brother Hagen, would you pray that the devil not bother me anymore for the rest of my life? <laughs> and, and, and so Brother Hagen started praying. He says, well, I want to command death to come upon you and you just drop dead. Because that's the only way the devil's not going to bother me anymore. He goes, no, 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 I want to live. Well, 
then you do what the Bible says in the Bible says you resist the devil. You yes. now receive, you yield not to that spirit in those lies. Yes. So the main topic, what I'm talking about is fear is basically you getting a hold of what the word of God says. I'm not afraid to die. I told my wife, hypothetically, if I die, if I die, have a little service for me. You be the only speaker. Just get up there and tell them, Frank did exactly what he says that when you, when you die, your spirit man comes out of your body like the hand out of a glove. And just like that, I'm in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm out, and I'm out here glorifying God. And I'm jumping down. And I see Jesus Christ. And I go, whoo, praise God. I'm worthy to be here because of you. Don't come up here and start 20 people crying because I'm gone. Don't do it. And then I told her, don't you ever mourn over me. Don't do it. Why? I'm in a better place. I messed up over here. I screwed up over here. And maybe that's why I left early. Whose fault is it? All said and done, all I, I said that, I go up to my wife and I go, with a long life yeah. will my God satisfy me. I can live to be 120 years old. Yeah. And then I told my wife, when we die, we're going together. And since we lost spouses to death, and they're both in heaven, she goes, what are you going to do about them? I says, I'm going to introduce them to each other. <laughs> That's scriptural, that's in, that's in Frank Churchill 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> this is the best thing ever happened in my life. And you know why we have this one and prosperous? We let no fear, no anxiety, no tension, no strife to come in between us. I won't let it. And when I hear my wife talking about, well, I don't know one of the boys did this, that, I go, well, you prayed. Isaiah 54, 13. And you know, people that know Stalin, you know she likes Isaiah. Yeah. She really thinks that the prophet Isaiah only wrote it to her. Yeah. He did. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not. But I know what the word of God says. <laughs> says Satan can't defeat what the blood has done for us we have authority in the name of Jesus amen. so fear has to leave amen. Amen? amen I have a credit card I have a credit card that goes to uh, I have a credit card from my Dillard's uh, Dillard's you don't know Dillard's? Yeah. I have a credit card. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you my limit. No. I go up to uh, I go up to Eric, and I look at Eric. And he's believing God for a new suit. I'm going to call Dillard's. I'm going to give him all the information that I have on my credit card. And I'm going to tell those people over there, this guy, Eric, is going to come in there. Eric Bacher from Rocky Ford is going to walk in there. I want you to help him find a good suit. Nice shirt. A nice tie. <clears throat> some good socks. And some good shoes. A good, nice t-shirt and boxer shorts or whatever. <laughs> Everything matches. When he walks in, I'll beat him up. If he walks in and he goes to the manager and says, Well, I'm Eric Baca, uh, I, 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 I really don't deserve 
this kindness from my pastor. <laughs> Do you know that my pastor works at three jobs? I don't know how much money he makes, but I know he can't afford all this. <laughs> so what I want you to do is find me a suit that is 90% off. <laughs> a shirt that costs $3.99. For, forget about the Garcia ties. They're $40. Give me something that's $5.99. Instead of the New York white shirts, Percent wrap over there. Maybe I can find me an old beat up white shirt. The shoes are hundred dollars. Oh, let me have some of the U.S. kids tennis shoes for ten dollars. I'd be in love. I would. If I heard that story, I'd come after it with a board with a nail stick in there. <laughs> Do you know why? Because my Jesus has a credit card. And his credit card is red. There's no expiration dates. There's not even a number. He says, use my card. Use my name. And get what you need. I paid for it two over 2,000 years ago. No fear. No fear. So if I do that to Eric, Knowing him, he wouldn't even go eat with us today. He'd probably get in the car, put $20 for the gas, go to dealers. I said, let me have a car. Let me have a car. And then he walk in, and somebody says, man, how you? I want the most expensive suit. <laughs> man, I, 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 I want that $80 white shirt, and I want that Garcia tie on my tool for $45 a piece. You know why? Because that little red card that Pastor Frank has, no limit. Socks? Give me some good pair of socks. He said, then he goes over there with the underwear is at. I want some nice silk. <laughs> <laughs> I want some nice t-shirts. You, you know, you go to Walmart and buy your t-shirts, six of them for uh, $15. You wear them three, four times like I do, you wash them, they look like they're uh, but if you go if you go to a nice place and get nice t-shirts, because I wear a lot of t-shirts, they'll last you long enough. Mm -hmm. Good quality stuff. Right. The blood of the lamb, Eric. And that credit card? Not that I'm gonna give you the credit card, <laughs> I'm just using you as an example. No fear. No fear. I'm covered by the blood of the lamb. Yes. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, right, my God supplies all my needs according to the riches of glory in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Exodus says, I'm the Lord that he can. Yes. I, 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 I'm the Lord that he can. Yes. I am. I'm healed from the crown of my head, the soles of my feet. Right. I'm healthy, strong, and prosperous. Yes, right. Let the weak say, what? I am strong. It's impossible. Please God, without what? Faith. Faith. I have no fear. That's right. No fear. Do you sense it? Don't yield to it. Amen. 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 Praise God. He's got a good God. I know I went over it a little bit, but really, while well, all what I said up to now is just a foundation. Yes. Then we're going to get into it next week. We're going to get into it a little more deeper. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't get mad because the Broncos lose. <laughs> Don't get happy because the Raiders lose. You'll be surprised how people treat their families because either one will win or lose. They, that's how they treat their families. I'm not ruled by sports. I'm not ruled by that. I'm only ruled by what the Word of God says. And if the Word of God says, love your husband, I mean, love, husbands love your wives as Jesus Christ loved the church, it doesn't matter what she does to me or what she says to me, it doesn't bother me. Sometimes, sometimes she'll, she'll try to suck me in. Yes, you do. <laughs> Last week, she said this. I called Frank, Frank's uh, service, long service. 
<laughs> and we're sitting in the car driving from Pueblo, I go back there, we're, we're coming back from Pueblo, and she calls me in, in, in my pickup. And I first took the clouds, yeah, she goes, answer it. <laughs> so I answered it. I said, Frank Church is speaking. Oh, is this Frank's lawn service? I go, yes. Uh, can you come over to my house and do my yard? Give me an estimate. And give me an estimate? I pay good. <laughs> I said, I'll be right over. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, this is foolish. You never came. <laughs> so, so, so I didn't, I didn't come over for the next two, three days. And then finally, uh, there, was, there wasn't much for me to do. So what I did is I mowed the lawn. I cleaned it up and everything. And guess what? I haven't got paid. I God's a good guy. I do not walk in fear. John and unbelief. Amen. People out there, we'll see you next Sunday on part two. Stay with us. You'll be good.